Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another Pi Data Global sponsor interview. I'm James Powell. I serve as co-chair of the NumFocus Board of Directors, as well as vice president of Pi Data. Today, I'm joined by Leo Dreyfus-Schmidt from Data IQ, who will be telling us a little bit more about how Data IQ approaches contributions to the open source community, as well as tries to bridge the gaps still remaining between ML practitioners, ML researchers, and ML business users. So Leo, would you like to introduce yourself to the Pi Data Global community? Hi, I'm Leo. I'm the research director here at Dataiku. Uh, I've been at Dataiku for about five years now, and I'm in charge of developing all of the machine learning uh, feature within the product. And Leo, would you like to introduce your team at Dataiku and Dataiku as a whole to the Pi Data Global community? So Dataiku, we are a software editing platform. We are building a data science studio. It's a software which is end-to-end -end from the collection of the data to the cleaning of the data to training the machine learning model to deploying into production. So that's what we do. And uh, within that, we have the research team, which is the lab, which is Dataiku lab. And our goal is really to understand what can we bring to our user, which is innovative in terms of machine learning, which has some kind of scientific uncertainty, but that we really believe has impact and value for our users. So Leo, tell me a little bit about the tools from the PyData ecosystem that you use and in your team at Data IQ. Yeah, sure. So we use many, uh, many of those tools, many Python based. Uh, so I think we're a big, big user of NumPy, SciPy, Pandas, uh, of course, Scikit-learn uh, for all of the machine learning models. And then other thing, I think like uh, Keras for deploying TensorFlow and PyTorch. Uh, for visualization, many things. When we stick with Python, it's a lot of uh, things within Jupyter and Matplotlib, um, sometimes a little bit of Bokeh. Um, I think that's about it for the main Python-based tool that we use in uh, the team. Fantastic. Tell me a little bit more about your use of Bokeh. So Bokeh, I think we use it mainly when we try to like build some kind of like easy and simple dashboard that we want to share with people. So usually what we would do, we will do machine learning experiments, but then we want to communicate those findings, those insights in a better way than, you know, just giving uh, tables and numbers. So we want to make that interactive. So if we can, we can leverage things like Bokeh or other tools. Would it be fair to say that you're a big user of scikit-learn, and that's probably the tool that excites you the most. We are a very big user of scikit-learn. So that's for, that's for sure. Uh, we have a deep. I mean, we have a deep relationship with with the scikit-learn community, and uh, we've been using it a lot throughout the years. So it's it's something that we really enjoy. We like the way the community works around scikit-learn. The is APIs. It's very nice to work with, and uh, yeah. So we are a big big user of scikit-learn. That's for sure. In fact, I understand that you're a member of the Scikit-Learn Consortium. Can you tell us a little bit more about why you've been motivated to contribute back to Scikit-Learn to such a degree? Sure. Um, so yeah, so we're, first, we're very proud to be part of that consortium. We've been there since day one. Um, I think we have common, common uh, interest as machine learning researcher that Scikit-Learn does. We want to make available for a broad range of users uh, all of the machine learning tools. And we've been using Scikit-Learn a lot within our product, within our platform. And so we thought it was just natural to, to you know, somehow to give back, to be there, to, to help and guide them if we can with our feedback from our users, from the industry. And also, I think also in terms of development, sometimes it happens that we are interested in developing topics and it's the same for them. So we have to work collaboratively. And whenever we can, we're very happy to, to push this very concretely throughout sprints, throughout uh, different feature requests, and working directly on the feature ourselves. So uh, it just makes sense for us to be to be very in the community. Do you encourage people on your team to give back to Scikit-Learn in the form of code contributions? Yeah, very much so. So as Scikit-Learn as other topics, we, 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 we encourage a lot of everybody to take part of sprints or anything, you know, that's part of like the open source community. We think it's great. We think it's a good occasion to meet other people, to discuss over techniques, over issues, to see other codes, to read some other stuff. And uh, it's very important. And we every year we've presented at various sprints. So very much something that we, we want our, our people at that I could to be part of. Contributing to an open source project is very time consuming. The standards are very high because they have to, you know, every contribution has to make yes. sure that it affects the entire community in a fair way, that it's not unduly Pr privileging one person who's making the contribution, that it's not solving one person's use case, but failing to solve other people's use case. Mm -hmm. And as a consequence, there's a lot of time and energy that's necessary in order to make an open source contribution. So where do you see open source contributions 
making a real benefit in your personal life or in the life of the folks who work for you? That's a great question. Uh, so first, yeah, you, you're definitely right. It takes a lot of time, a lot of energy. But I think we all think, first, it's nothing is mandatory. We don't want to force people to contribute you know, within the team. Uh, we encourage them. We want to help them do so. We want to you know, give them the tools and the help so that they can be the most efficient contributors. But then, as you said, it is something which is very time consuming. I think the benefit comes as in, first, people are very proud to contribute to open source community. This, this you know, this really this feeling that, you know, I've, I've been able to like give back to uh, a framework that I use a lot. So I think this is a huge drive for everyone. So even though you spend months, sometimes years actually on some uh, pull requests and some features, uh, you know, at the, at the end, I think people are very, very happy with, with that. So it is important as a, that we kind of like measure how much time it takes from them, you know, on their daily work. But uh, I think once it's come from such, you know, a good place, people are enthusiastic to do so. So they don't count the hours and so to just you know, go on and do it. So I understand that Aku is hiring. What positions, what roles, what profiles are you hiring for? Yeah, we are hiring uh, globally uh, around the globe and uh, for uh, various technical positions. So data scientists, uh, people who help our clients uh, make their data science protect a reality. We're hiring for software engineering in various part of the uh, stack, specifically in machine learning. We're also hiring for uh, research scientists, so people in the research team who help you know, find and develop innovative machine learning driven uh, products. Um, and also from architecture people who can help us, you know, design uh, big data architecture for our clients. So I think the scope is very, very broad. Um, so if anyone is interested, we'd be super happy to have you apply uh, at our jobs. What kind of thing makes a candidate stand out when they're applying for your team? It's a great question again. Uh, so, you know what, I, I think, you know, uh, it's very hard right now because there's a lot of people applying to a lot of to, to those jobs. So it's you can only spend a limited amount of time looking over somebody's resume. And I would say two things that a lot when people have GitHub projects that we can look for, when they have strong you know research background where we can check. And I think everything here relates to what do you know, how will involved they were within the community, if, if, whether it's the machine learning research community or the machine learning software engineering community. But having those projects, you know, it kind of show that uh, if you were a junior, you didn't just go through school and did, you know, what you were supposed to do, but, you know, you went out there, you were curious, you started things on your own, you started exploring. And if you're more advanced, you just didn't do what, you know, job asked you to do, but you had that curiosity to try things. And I think that's also why I think being involved if you can in an open source community project, it's a great way you know, to get exposed to, 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 to those type of things. And this is definitely a, a big plus when, uh, when you see somebody who comes with such an expertise. I understand that Dataiku is a big proponent of open source and specifically the PyData stack. But speaking honestly, what pain points or what growing pains do you foresee for the tools that we're using today? I think, you know, I don't know if it's a pain point per se, but I would say that sometimes it's hard to, to stay up to date with all the latest release, with all of the things that we have on board with uh, the, the tool that we use. And also sometimes we have to make decision without having the visibility of where those projects are going. Uh, it happened in the past. We got like, oh, we need to push that feature you know, further. Uh, so we moving away from the base implementation. And then maybe six months later or nine months later, you know, it comes uh, in the base uh, package that we were interested in in the first place. So we're like, oh, you know, if we had known that, I don't know, we, we would have known it that way. Should we have gotten in touch with those guys? I would say this, you know, staying up to date with everything that's going on, having more visibility. Uh, and also, you know, I think having more visibility is also a great way to see like, oh, if you guys are, are going that way, then we'd be super happy to contribute because we have, you know, feedback from the industry. We have our own interests. So I, I would say that's something. Speaking about keeping up to date, how do you keep up to date as you get more senior the amount of time that you have to go through change logs is definitely much less than when you were junior. That's true. Um, so I think there's many ways to do that. First, within the team, we have different people with various expertise. So then each one is the owner of this topic as a researcher, as a machine learning uh, engineer. So they are following very closely um, the scope of their field, I would say. So that's a great way to have uh, more people following more projects. And then I would say uh, joining meetups, joining uh, various events like sprints, like conferences, is always a great way to to you know to, to keep on top of things. So after each conference, even if I can make it, I would just binge watch all of the conference talks and be like, okay, this is what I need to know now.
Tell me a little bit more about building a community between machine learning practitioners, researchers, and business owners. Is this important? And how do you go about doing that? Yeah. Um, so first, I think as researcher within a company, uh, so we are really much doing applied research. We we can see that there's some kind of like disconnect between the academic research, the pursuing state of the art results. You know, the pursuing that that extra percent. And on the other hand, you have the machine learning practitioner, uh, and they need something else. They need something reliable. They need something robust. They need something that works in every situation. You know, not going to be the best in that specific one. They don't want to overfeed a little board if you want. Um, and they also need to share what they do, defining with other users, which are not technical. So that's where we see ourselves. We are trying, and I think in that role, I think the open source community is also helping in doing that to you know, make that connection, build that gap. And that's really the sense of our research. We're trying to, to tech where we can and push further uh, what we see in uh, the research community, but, but build that in a way so that it could benefit a larger audience Two of your colleagues will be speaking at PyData Global. Will they be sharing some of the research that they've done with the PyData Global community? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're very happy this year. We had uh, two two talk. One by Alexander Abraham is going to be talking about active learning, which is a, a great topic we had around labeling. Uh, and we actually open source our own solution, which is called Cardinal. So we we'll have a talk uh, called Cardinal, a metrics-based active learning framework. And then we have another research scientist of ours, which is Simona Maggio, uh, who study this year. Uh, globally, what we call machine learning debugging, and it's about learning and understanding uh, where you model make mistakes. So it's called learning from your model's mistake. So I encourage to go and check it out, give us feedback, because that's how the community should, should work. Uh, and maybe you can go and play with uh, those open source projects that we are just started to release. So tell me a little bit more about the local efforts that Dataiku has made to support the local communities. I understand Dataiku is a big supporter of the PyData Paris meetup group. What motivates you to support these local communities in that way? I think, you know, we, we used to be a, a small startup. When I joined Dataiku, we were, I don't know, maybe 20. Now we're about 500 people. Uh, and so I know what it is to be, uh, to have, you know, limited, uh, I would say funds to be in a small office. And so usually we see that those type of efforts from the community, you know, they kind of struggle sometimes to find a right, just, just, you know, just a room to have people meet and talk. So that's what we did the, earlier this year before the COVID, we did that with uh, the Paris Pi Data. We host the meetup, we were super happy to do so. And, you know, it's another way I think for us to give back, you know, it's not only about giving back in contributing as a researcher or as an engineer, it's also giving back as, you know, we, we, we can afford to, you know, to have people stay with us at the office. Uh, we also did that with sprints where we hosted some sprints. Uh, that was another great way to, to be embedded in the uh, local activities of, uh, of the DataSense uh, ecosystem in, here in Paris, but also in New York. So yeah, that's what we do. Is it not the case that your contributions to the Scikit-Learn Consortium and to NumFocus in the form of sponsoring PyData Global take into account that the sustainability of these projects is so difficult. And as a consequence, you need to have some centralized organization or at least some community supported organization, I should say, helping to make, make, ensure that these projects are sustained over the long haul. I agree. And I think specifically, I would say that it's not the same type of people. You, you know, you, I understand that when you're a software engineer, a coder, a national researcher, you know, do you, you, you want to take the time out of coding, out of doing the research, out of doing the science, to you know, to do the communication, to do the publicity, to do all of that, to bring the community together, to find a room to talk, to, you know, uh, it's it's another job, and I think it's it's something that not everybody we uh, that directly contribute to those projects want to do, uh, which is fine, and so I think it's important that we have other folks contributing in other ways uh, to make you know to make all of this thing happen happening. And uh, yeah, I think this is, without that, I think, you know, it will only be a bunch of coders and geekers on their own. And, uh, yeah, you know, nobody will talk except on GitHub. Leo, is there any final message you would like to leave the PyData global community? Yeah, first, come see our talk. We have two amazing talks. We are looking forward to having your feedback, to having your questions. And uh, we hope we can talk. We have a booth as well. So if you have any questions about what we do, about our research topic, about our software, about anything, we very much like to hear from you. And uh, last plug on Cardinal, uh, Active Learning Solution. If you want to have a look, it's on GitHub. It's open source. And we're looking forward to any contribution. So stay tuned.
Thank you, Leo, for joining us today for our Pi Data Global sponsor interview. I really enjoyed hearing a little bit more about how you're trying to bring together the research community, the practitioner community, and the business community, as well as details of how Daraiku approaches its contributions to open source. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now. Bye-bye.